it by far uh, that you'll see on the show today. Uh, like literally the bottom wick on a stock that I had hundreds of shares on. So whatever, but we make that money right back now as we go back to the upside. What's going on, Brenda? Uh, another earnings name here, guys. Kevlar Pharmaceuticals reported, uh, looks like in the pre-market here, but downside action so far, 1330, 1350 uh, areas to watch. Uh, if we get back up there, but uh, straight southbound for Emma. Uh, yeah, Till we come back to that 58, 58 breaks. I still have that final third of our other long. Uh, and then, whoops, I didn't mean to go to Virgin Galactic. I meant to go to a sundown for you guys. And this has now again pulled back into that 215, 220 range. So, uh, it's all right, all right, what's going on, guys? Welcome uh, back to another live session. All right, so um, it's a little bit late, but it is what it is. So we're looking at the Nasdaq right now. Um, I don't know, guys. I'm I'm thinking we're looking for a maybe a drop soon. I'm not gonna predict anything, but I don't. Know, I think Nasdaq right now is really just it, it's grinding its way up slowly. Um, and it's just been really kind of choppy. Last couple of kind of I'll get I'll, I guess I'll say the last this month particularly we've been seeing kind of um, just really slow kind of price action so um, we'll see I don't know you know I'm thankful that I, I you know I wasn't trading too much on the Nasdaq and I you know I saw that there's a market change right and I you know I didn't go ahead and, and be my aggressive kind of self whenever I'm, I'm trading really good setup so um, I'm happy about that really happy about that I, I didn't take any I don't think I took any losses I think actually I did I think I, I had one like I think I had two losses or three losses um, but there were small losses and they're manageable and then I was green and then at the end of that specific day I was green but right now it looks like the Nasdaq wants to pull back down so we'll see mm, I'm thinking maybe a, a collapsing dragon off the five minute chart Thank you about scalping. What's up, Peter? So it looks like Nasdaq is trying to come down right now. Mm. Let's see what we do here. Yeah, I, I feel like this week it hasn't been my week either. Just like last week. I just I haven't been feeling it. Like I haven't been feeling like 100% in the market. Usually whenever I'm really... I don't know. I'm like I'm part of the market basically. Whenever I'm trading really good, you know, I could feel like I'm I'm catching all like the the moves. I can predict the moves really fairly easily. I can see what the market is trying to do, and I can react in a way where I could you know execute it, execute my positions. Um, but Nasdaq today, this the last couple of weeks, not really. Haven't been really feeling that so. Um, I'm not gonna go ahead and try swinging the fences because again, that's literally how you lose money. If you're not feeling good, if you're not feeling comfortable in your settings, then stop trading. Like last month, I made about like what almost 30 percent in one month. That's insane for me, uh, at least for me. Um, so I'm not gonna go ahead and, and try like you know swing the fences when um you know when again like I'm. I, I'm, I'm up last month and I don't want to give away any of those profits. Um, but the Nasdaq for me has only been, yeah, it's just been really choppy. Um, I think what has room today is definitely the Russell. The Russell is kind of a, a indice where, you know, Nasdaq looks seems like overvalued and it looks like it's getting choppier because it's trying to grind all the way back up. Um, but the Nasdaq, I mean, not the Nasdaq, but the... Um, but Dow, I mean, Dow, I'm losing my mind. Um, but Russell, which is the um, the kind of like the large small caps, small caps um, stock market, it's it's been grinding every day fairly with a lot of momentum. So I, I like that momentum, and the volatility is really great. So right now, currently, we have we're in a fairly kind of volatile market, 
and hot market on on Russell. So I like that. Look at that. Beautiful. That is beautiful. So um, it, it's going to be easier and easier to kind of make money. Um, looking at the one monthly chart, we're literally, I believe, at the all time highs. <laughs> oh my gosh. Dude, this is insane. Look at that. Look at that parabolic move on the Russell. That's insane. That's insane. That's insane. You definitely don't want to be like in the way for that, bro. That is very, very dangerous. Uh, give it to like 47, 40 or so, this little top here, uh, where there was some consolidation. Call risk like 40 to 50 pennies. Well, that's insane. That's an insane push. Get, like, so, uh, market, yes, the Russell last year has been really strong, so I, I do like that. Um, but I think right now, Russell, I'm just going to start trading a little bit more of a Russell because I can see that the market is still fairly volatile on that. So, I, I want to trade like something that's really moving with, with volatility and it respects my levels really well, so I like that. This is a sign of strength, at least for the time being. I mean, we're talking about dip buys over in, uh, in Sundown. So uh, we should we see. That. Holding 265 uh, to market and then a couple of times here since the open. So let's look out, uh, watch closely as GameStop does break out 4740. So uh, we'll have the last one. It's going to be a hit. Uh, still up on the stock overall, but man, I missed that. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to watch GSAT. If GSAT breaks high of the day, I'm watching 307, it looks like, is the top. All right, good call on GSAT. Uh, yeah, what's up, Brendan? Uh, crazy one from yesterday, guys, just popping up here. Was Hall sitting there briefly? Big volatility holds to the upside for 21. This thing opened at 25 day. on the reopen there. So uh, up to 26 now for AUVI. Looks like the Nasdaq is trying to come back higher right now. You saw, you saw that was your lunch money trade there yesterday. Uh, and it paid off a lot more than lunch money uh, yesterday. It just kept on going up. We're just watching Neo here. I'm pretty light on it, but wow, uh, what a monster day this has been on NIO for me. Uh, my best day in a long time off this $3 winner. So let's just keep it going to the high side now on NIO. Still watching Palantir just ripping its face off as well. Uh, did the I don't know. For me, whenever I'm, I'm looking at a different market chain in, in a specific uh, instrument, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and kind of invest my time somewhere else until the market changes. That's just something for me. So whether that's equities, maybe I'll, I'll stick more into equities and stocks, individual stocks. Uh, and doing some option plays on that, more option plays on that. Very rarely will I do like a lot of option plays. Like I'm mostly like a swing trader for options. Um, but, you know, I, I'll, I'll maybe shift my portfolio or my kind of my time with, you know, day trading options. Close on individual stocks. Yeah, and sometimes I focus on metals, um, what, or whatever is moving in metals as well. Um, I, I, I love lo lo looking at oil. Oil is pretty good. Um, oil is, has been doing a pretty kind of good move for like the last couple of months. Interesting. I want to look at this real quick. So let's go to the one minute. Yeah, no interest for me. I mean, I could try scalping it on the break of that high right there. Interesting. But yeah, so I, I usually shift my focus on stuff that is moving um, and that fits my systems and strategy. So um, if I don't see any kind of good setups and I see a market change, then um, I usually focus my time on something else. Not, I repeat, should not 
uh, have been a loser, but uh, we did get that what the heck? punch down for us. So sometimes that happens, and then look at SNEL. Uh, Diamond Hand. Oh, here, we should talk about Diamond Hand. Where's that Diamond Hand thing that we have? There it is. Uh, used to see Demon Hand, uh, but now it says Diamond Hand. Uh, and you can see there, we did hold some SNDL, guys. So right back to the high side now. Let's get a little bit more out. Let's put those diamonds into a little bit of platinum. Uh, and then we'll get out here at 235 uh, if we can. Maybe some right now. Hold the rest. See if we break that 250 for big trade alert. Yeah, and uh, all, also going to be on the radar is that BTCH. I don't want to confuse BHCG, which is heading hmm. to the downside. Interesting. I don't even know what's going on right now. Uh, it's every I just noticed that I had a position uh, open on my Ninja Trader. Which is freaking weird. Uh, I'm looking for uh, another halt to get me into a possible trade there. I'm uh, confused. AI, uh, uh, we, we talked about this name a couple times and some missed opportunities. Load up, load up, load up. Monster move off the up, bottom here. It's now up $10, guys. This one is uh, another big time pusher. Uh, and what an unbelievable move. We just made off the low there. So I just want to put that to your attention. It was looking like it was going to drop like a stone. Uh, now, positive on session. Uh, yeah, I'm, su I'm super confused. I don't know why I had an open position. Well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not complaining because I, I made like, like one thousand dollars out of it. But still, I'm kind of, kind of concerned on why I, why there was a position opened. I didn't even trade yesterday, like any, in any instruments. I mean, I'll take the, the thousand dollars, but still, what the heck? Him out there on that 63.75 break, so uh, now we'll hold it to the high side. If we can get back to 64, let's take some more out. But, uh, that's that's very concerning. I mean, I may call my broker because of that, because that's that's something that I I'm really confused Connection about. Connection lost. Uh, SNDL trade there, and we got some out there at 32, like you mentioned. So that was a little out. Now we'll hold the rest for that 250 level uh, and see if that gets taken out. But I don't know, Neil. I know you've been watching Tilray a little bit here. Yeah, I'm gonna call my broker. That's it's wow. so weird. Runner there today. Uh, I do prefer CGC, so we'll have to find some levels to get in. Wow, even that one up 15%. This is just a marijuana type of day today, guys. Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna go with uh, I don't know the new winner, winner chicken dinner. Um, look, we, we talk about this all the time. If it gives you it gives you one shot here at the open, and I had an order out and actually missed this move, and when it came the second time, I was able to actually get the same price, and thank goodness we did. Uh, it did stall out the first time, got like a, a dollar win. Uh, it just made another bounce, and anytime I get the second move, not the first, I'll, I'll zero in on that low of day, that 2080, and if it consolidates higher than that, I'll just get out on that bounce. So it's going to end up being like a dollar 25 on the second half of the trade. Yeah, it's uh, such a freaking dude. I don't even know. Back. That's that's concerning uh, for me because I didn't even place a trade. There's no way I placed a trade because I wasn't even trading. I didn't trade um, futures yesterday. On this one. Not to be mistaken with BTPH, which is uh, still moonshotting, but uh, reloaded on this. I want to put this one all the way up to four if it gets there, but uh, once it consolidated around 70, I picked some more shares up, got a 65 uh, uh, average price now. Start profit taking at 50 and lower, uh, and then hopefully this gets down towards the yesterday. Because, like, what if what if I took, what if that was, like, a, a sell order instead of, you know, I would be down, like, a thousand bucks. Yeah, update on GM here, guys. I really didn't like that uh, comment about uh, a lack of chip supply. Uh, big flush here for GM right from the open, 56 and a half to 53 and a half now. Huge volume behind GM. Ooh. Oh, yeah, we love Ford. I talked about why I love Ford earlier, and uh, yeah, Ford coming into play again today. So uh, GM on a big move, Brendan. I love GM, uh, but yeah, downside right now, 53 bounces off that 53. Look at this level, 53.80 right here on some consolidation breaks. So. Uh, maybe let's try that 5390 break here. All right, I just email my broker. And, uh, speaking of break, uh, that's talk concerning. About a, talk about uh, getting out just in the nick of time because that 47 break on Sundial, uh, sorry, on, on GameStop. Sundial yeah, break, I'll show you guys real so, quick. So, uh, I got um, I guess I just had a trade open and I just closed it out. Um, I closed it out like right over here <laughs> on top of here because I saw that I had a trade open. I was like, what the heck. I wonder where did I freaking, where did our order come from, bro? Let's go to the 15 minute. I bought it here. What the heck? 
wow, by the skin of my teeth, I able to get it back. So, dude, what happens if you hang on too long? This is literally during the night, and I wasn't even in my desk during the night. What the heck? That's concerning to me. That short trade, which we've seen time and time again. I'm going to go back to that CGIX. This is during 20.15. Uh, no, it's getting out when I saw this consolidation here. It's so around 820. Goes all the way to almost to the pre market high of the huh. day uh, before reversing. It's now right back. I wasn't even at my desk during that time. That's, and it goes, and, and yep, that's concerning. If it breaks that, I think floodgates for sure. Um, but if it holds that 14.15 oh well. where I got out originally, um, yeah, we're going to email out my broker. I just emailed my broker right now, so we'll see what he or whatever she, whatever, uh, says about that. I mean, again, I'm not complaining. I made like 1.9k to on that trade, but still, like, what if that trade was a sell order? <laughs> I would be down 1.9k, and I would not be happy. How many people have joined my course? I think right now we're about. Um, I think about 20. A little bit more over 20. Lots of stuff happening there. I want to give, I don't think we talked about this. Uh, the Monkey Shiner, thank you so much. You've been supporting us uh, for a very long time, my friend. So uh, there we go. BPTH, thank you so, so much with that. Uh, and then I think this is Columbia. I think we got this yesterday as well. Okay, so oh, the Nasdaq Columbia. is just not yeah, doing it. USD. Thank you so much. Not doing its thing. Channel. We know that and we love it because you love it. So uh, this is what we're passionate about. We, we, you know, Brendan and I are all passionate about the markets, if you can't tell. Uh, so yes, thank you for the support there, guys. Means a lot. Colombian dollars, whatever you want to send us is fantastic. Thank you again for all that love and that support. Keep them coming, guys. What's up, Brenda? Uh, another earnings thing, guys. BG. Uh, Looks like gold is up a break even right now. Looks like he's trying to stall off the top right now on gold. So maybe it could be a you know indication of a maybe a sell off soon. Who knows? Tesla's down 1.89%. Uh, uh, Silver is at break even right now. Looks like it's stalling as well, which is quite interesting because I know that um, it is trying. Like I know the the Wall Street bets community is with is, is trying to short squeeze that at the moment. So we'll see what we do here in silver the next couple of days. Um, we're still short on UJ right now. My trade on, I think it was what, Monday? I believe Monday. I took the trade. Today's Wednesday, yeah, Monday. Sorry. I was like confused. Um, but yeah, I mean, so far a really good trade. I mean, we're up about, right now on it, like about 2.3R. Overall, it gave us four execution R, which is pre still pretty good. Like I'm, I'm fairly, really happy on this trade. Um, we made about um, three percent on close, and then on roaming profits, we have like half a percent left. So I am extremely, extremely happy with this trade. Um, I mean, again, like I just, it's just literally like trying to look for momentum and, and um, you know, sticking on edge. So I, I'm, I, I've been on edge on this specific pair for quite some time so I know exactly what to look for so I mean I am expecting a rejection either on the 21 EMA or off that 50 level which is that it's that's exactly what it's doing right now it's bouncing off the the 21 EMA so we could see it maybe uh, since it's today looks like it's a really weak day we could see maybe um, another continuation toward the 50 EMA so we'll see on that. And then on that, I'll be closing a little bit more in profits. And then just basically seeing 
what exactly it does. So it's going to be a science, exper science, experiments, uh, a science experiment. I made money, right? I, I'm not going to try to swing the fences and, and hold my, my size, my full size or whatever. You know, it, it's reached my level. I'm going to just close my profits, move my stop into profit a little bit more. And just basically wait exactly what it does. You know, if it comes back up, stops me out, it is what it is. If it continues going down, you know, I make a little bit more money. Yeah, it has been crazy. <laughs> it's been freaking insanely crazy, the Russell. It's if you look at the daily chart, bro. Oh my gosh, it's literally like a parabolic. It looks like just a parabolic penny stock. Kind of like the patterns, but I don't know. Maybe that means it's gonna fall down even even harder, if it does. But we'll see. Okay, it looks like the roster is trying to break right now. I may go ahead and take a scalp here. Long. Oh man, it's freezing cold outside. It sucks, but it is what it is. But anyway, so this is UJ. I'm still in the trade. I'm up three percent. I'm happy. You know, I'm not. I'm not really, you know, this happy. The only thing that I could have done better on this trade is risk two percent. I should have been risking at least two percent on this trade because I knew that from having such a an insane move for the last couple of days, we're eventually going to see kind of a, a big rejection, right? So. Um, I think the only thing that I could have done better was, you know, risk a lot, at least 2%, a little bit more on the trade. But yeah, uh, I'm still happy about it. I'm grateful. Okay, looks like the Nasdaq is trying to push back high right now. Very interesting. I don't know. I just don't feel like trading this today. You know, it's just, I'm not feeling it. I could try scalping it. I'm fine with scalping it. Maybe just a few points. Oh, just getting into it. Just getting in a few points. Like, not my scalping system, but aggressively scalping on my future account. Like, you know, going scrolling down to the 15 second time frame and just um, trading off bounces and pullbacks off Kim's bounce system. It's one of Dr. Kim Long's systems. But um, right now I'm just, I'm chilling. So what do you want to know about your JPY, Peter?
Yep, yep. And, uh, and, and that's why we talked about AMC there as well, uh, breaking up to six and then coming right back, so no surprise there. Okay, this spoke VWAP, so I think it's about time to get out. Uh, we can just get out of uh, a, what is it, UAA Under Armour right now. Uh, it was a good trade for us, but we're pretty light on it, so I wasn't overly worried. So, so that might seem not concerned. Sorry, I was looking at my email from Ninja Trader, but looking at this right now, um, yeah, I mean, Liquid 50 is up in the buy zone. MACD is falling, so that's something I, I, I fairly don't like on the 15 minute, but it's still above the zero line, which is, you know, you could call bullish territory, right? Um, if we go to the one hour time frame, you can see that, you know, Liquid 50 is fairly in the buy zone. Looks like we bounce off the 200 EMA. I think more interesting is it bounce off that 50 on the four hour. That's interesting to me. And it looks like we're, we're trying to break toward the highs. We're, we're really kind of just, if you see on the four hour chart where you can see a clear rejection off the top, right? So, I mean, like it's, it's, it's hard. It's fairly hard to, to call the, the, the top or, I mean, to, you know, know that is it going to break the, the top finally, right? So, um, I don't know, I would be careful because of that, because we're, we're seeing clear rejection on the higher time frames. Even though Liquid 50 is up in the buy zone on 4-hour, MACD looks like it's in great condition. You know, it does have some time since literally, um, since uh, like over two months ago, I'll say, like almost two months ago, it's been, you know, rejecting off that top. If we go to the one daily chart, um, you know, you can see it more clearly. Annoying. So it's a bit, it's a bit. Um, I would say just something that you definitely have to be careful with because of that rejection off that high. Um, Liquid fifty is falling on the daily. MACD is rising. So obviously it's bullish, but you know, keeping that in mind, just you know, being careful with. You know, we know that from the highs, we've been seeing a lot of rejections, specifically this past rejection. Right over here. Um, but that's the higher time frame, so we could still look for fairly good risk reward wise, right? So we see that there's divergence right over here. And we can see that the MACD is up in um, bullish territory. It's, it's trying to rise up, so it's trying to break out toward the high route over here, right? So um, could be a fairly good kind of um, maybe break out toward the upside on the MACD, right? Um, looks like the NASDAQ is trying to rise right now and break out. Um, so I would say, okay, so it, this would be a fairly good kind of... Um, Persistence, position sizing stop. So this would be a really good area where you would put your stop, and then like this is perfect because you're looking to break on that break of the 200 EMA. So we note that that the liquid 50 is this is actually you know a great catch on the one minute. You can see how the liquid 50 is rising right there, right? So um, it's going to be something that okay. So liquid 50 is rising, so we're we're, we're probably prone to to a breakout. We're in some summer territory. Um, you know, we can put our stop right over here or even right over here getting us a very tight stop loss right now And looks like it's trying to break out right now So I would fairly be confident in taking this trade to get at least 2R on top, right? So I'm I like that a lot. I'm actually gonna see if we break out right over here that's actually a nice catch. I haven't been really too focused on um, on Forex scalping, and that's a little bit my fault because I've been really busy with um, Nasdaq, Nasdaq futures, and etc. Um, but you know, now that we have a market change, I need to start shifting my focus back at it again. But I like that breakout. Look at that. Look at that breakout. I do like that. Not gonna lie, I do like that. I like that breakout a lot. I'm not in yet. I'm waiting. I'm still waiting for kind of a breakout move right over here. You can definitely get 2R from that pin. Um, 
Um, you will want you will want the pin, the pin of the candle to be touching the 50 EMA. Um, it's a little bit different from a D1, right? Because you have the candles touching the the 50 EMA. I'm buying right now. I just bought. I just bought right now, right? So, um, you you still want the pins to be hitting the 50 EMA on the 15 minute chart, right? So, uh, I'm in right now. It's, it's going up. Um, if you're in the course, you already know what to do. We're in this real quick. What do we know? We know to close 50% at 1R. So this is our 1R level right over here. Right? So let's go ahead. It's pushing up. Let's go. What do I like Nasdaq over Forex? Well, for me, I mean, like, I can make way more money in, than, than Forex. At least in my eyes. Um, because it's fairly easy for me to make money. Um, like, I can make money for sure on Forex, but I'm always looking for better returns, you know? I'm always looking to make more money. You know, I, I feel like that I, I spend too much time on Forex to make maybe a le maybe 10 to 15% a month, maybe even 20%, and then Nasdaq, I, I could fairly get 20% really easily per month. So for me, it's just something that I, you know, um, you know, if, if obviously, like, I like Forex, it's a good market, but if I'm making more money in one specific market, then um, I need to shift my focus a little bit more on that specific instrument, you know, at least for me in my eyes. Um, you know, it's not just, it's not, I know a lot of people kind of crap on me saying, oh, it's because you're not profitable in one market or whatever. It's No, it's completely different. You know, you can see a lot of Forex traders who transition to stocks and equities. Same same th conclusion. You know, they can make way more money trading all those instruments. And, um... Okay, so we're not seeing that breakout. Usually... On this move, we're going to see a, you know, on that break of the 200 EMA, we usually see a really significant breakout, but we're not seeing that. Again, it's probably because this is Forex, but, you know, I fairly, even on Forex, I really want a break, a really good break. So we're going to wait. If it flushes right now, I'm it may be indication of, you know, waiting it out just a minute. So Liquid 50 is still rising. MACD looks like it's breaking out toward the high right now. So looking at the MACD level right here, we just broke out through the previous high, right? So broke through this level we broke through this level and now we're coming back higher so we're gonna wait and see what we do here liquid 50 is rising tl and and um, rsi is rising it's up in the buy zone that's a perfect entry that's a perfect level one uh primary level one right there so um good cash peter that's a really good catch <laughs> you're, you're, you're making me money right now so shout out to peter for that he's one of our course members Nasdaq is literally falling through the roof right now. Look at that. I knew that we were prone for, for a break. That's why I wasn't buying it. Look at that, Russell. <laughs> I'm so glad that I closed it, right? <laughs> I closed it off the top because I would be down if I didn't. But Ro Nasdaq looks really interesting in my eyes right now. It, it's, it's coming back down right over here. So I may take a quick scalp here. I'm on the 15 seconds, so I may take a quick scalp on that. Now we're seeing a big flush, which is kind of interesting. I got 80 for the short side. I scalped them out, so we're in the money. 
uh, on this trade and we've already taken profit though we're, we're still waiting it out because all the indications are telling us hey it's gonna go up MACD TDI confirmation we have divergence off that you know off a significant level off the 800 universal level um, we have also a red or green move so you can see um, kind of a red or green move off this divergent level right over here not a strong red or green move but it's still a red or green move and we know that again looking at the at the um, EMAs they're wanting to break out so we'll see see what we do here what we do here you know it's just a matter of waiting right now Oh my god, Russ Nasdaq is literally freaking falling through the roof right now. Order filled. Order filled. It's pushing back down, so it, it definitely has some weakness right now. Could be maybe a false breakout. We'll see. We're still waiting. I, I don't like how it flushes right there really fast. That's telling me that, I don't know, I, I, something, it's volatile. Of course, it's volatile, but it's telling me there's volatility toward the downside. So that's something I really don't like. Um, but, I mean, we're trusting we're trusting the, the trade. For me, in my eyes, everything looks pretty good. Um Looks like it's flushing back down. Yeah, it's choppy. I would say it's a little bit choppy toward the upside. Because um, usually on that break of the 200 EMA, you're going to see a very good breakout toward the upside. So we didn't see that right away, which um, if you don't see that right away, that's usually an indication that um, that there's there's some weakness toward the upside for sure. And it's going to probably take its time. Like, you know, you, you may be right on the direction, but um, it's going to take its time toward the upside. So definitely be careful with that.
have as many yeah, as yeah. you want, right? So, uh, gonna have that. It's looks like it's coming any second now. Here's 46, 47, uh, 250 is the key one. Uh, this is the level I'm looking at. Still about four million showing, and I guarantee it's more than that, guys. Probably like five or six. Let's get to the rebound end because that's what we're discussing right now. And look at Ashley Abo. Uh, beautiful chain number one, 2808. You just got out 85s there. Got 85 on the high side. So a nice little 90 cent win. Forget about Sundial. I mean, I have Sundial. It's a 50 cent winner. But how about this one? How about Afria? 90 cents now, or was 90 cents, 80 cents now uh, in the money. We took some out there. So Afria to continue to cash for us uh, as our Davis continues. So look at that flush right there. That's generally something that, you know. It's it's something that you know it's very very choppy. So whenever you see that break of the 200 EMA, it usually just bounces back up. So um, that's something you be careful with. Also looking at the 50 minute chart, liquid 50 looks flat right now. So that's something to be a little bit careful with. And generally, whenever I see that it's choppy like that, um, you know, and I'm fairly certain about the direction. I would move my stop a little bit closer to um, to one of those previous higher lows, so right over here. I'll move my stop like that. Um, but for me right now, the current moment, if I see if I see more rejection right over here, then I, I may move my stop. But I'm okay with taking the full the full stop from right over here at this level. From like right over here. Because um, I'd rather be wrong right now and instead of like extend my 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 kind of risk right now. So, um, but yeah, I mean like whenever you don't see like a, a break off that 200 EMA and it kind of fall like it kind of like it's like a false breakout. That's something you definitely have to be careful with, for sure. Plus, you get some little, little divergence on top as well. And like I said again, I don't like how the MACD was falling in the 15-minute chart. Generally, on the if it's falling like that, it's telling me that momentum is pretty, 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 pretty slow. I mean, not slow, but bearish. Excuse me. So that's something I really don't like. Oh my gosh, Nasdaq is literally falling off the. Maybe I should have been focused a little bit more than Nasdaq. Look at that move, dude. Oh my gosh, I just missed that. I'm actually pissed. I totally just missed that move. Dang it. Dude, look at that! Look at that crash! I could literally would have made so much money on that. Literally, such a flash crash right now. Oh my God, we're having a flash crash right now. Look at that! Look at that volatility, bro! Oh my God. Or order, or order, Bill. Pick up some more after we dumped it all off here. Good out there, good out there, good out there. So making money on this name as well as SMBL, you guys know that. Uh, so good trading there, good trade by Neil off that 50 short. And that's the kind of stuff that we're talking about. Things aren't going to moonshot forever, guys. Uh, so you do got to try to get some uh, while they're hot and uh, not while they're not. So here comes after you to the downside. We're going to watch out for a 27 break, but we're just jamming right now with it. So uh, it's okay for us on that trade. So we'll wait, keep waiting for Afri to go high side there. If it can come in, that's great. Our GM was a mistake to get in. So we got in and we got out there for flat. And I was going to hold that last piece until 53 break. And that's exactly what happened. So bad earnings for GM today. I'm wondering if this is an opportunity to pick up some more stock, uh, honestly, of GM today. I love the stock. Uh, but look at what's happening in the market. Peak city right now. So you got to watch out here. They just erased yeah. gains. Down five monster. Yeah, monster move down here uh, in the market, guys. We gotta get short something. Uh, maybe Brendan, what's up? Yeah, I was just gonna mention, guys. Uh, huge move down in the market here. Keeping my eye. Dude, oh my gosh. <laughs> market is literally falling. Order. I just took a quick scalp. I'm taking profits. I am. Order. Bill. I'm averaging down right now, in case it goes up, but I don't think it's coming back up. It's gonna come back to, toward that level. 
Oh my god, look at this flash crash, bro. Holy crap, we are... We just fell down like... We're bouncing off that level. I'm in profit right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and close out if you bounce off that. I got out of break even right now. We're bouncing off that level. I should have taken that clap thing. I should have put some alerts on that. I had no idea that it was going to crash like that. I knew that today was sketchy because of how, you know, how price action was doing on the open right now. So I, I was not keen on trading it, on buying it because I knew something was up. Order filled. I'm just in right now. So we're bouncing right now. Okay, we're bouncing off that. I'm buying right now. Order filled. break even right now at that specific trade I was trying to trade it off um, from bounce to Bollinger Band and as well as the 8 EMA
but nice little move to the high side there. He looked a little bit of something that was strong and could have been strong all day, right? So you guys know that. So there it comes right back to the high side, up 10 plus percent. Good little bottom pick there uh, on Twitter. Unfortunately, that app here didn't work out as much as we wanted it to. So uh, I still think that we could probably pick okay. it up. Let's look at Eurocat real quick. Okay, so we're still in the trade on Eurocat. <laughs> So we're, we're, we'll, we'll be waiting on the specific trade frame. I want to put my, my, my alerts on it real quick. Just in case it, it breaks out. Yeah, we are coming back down right now. Which is interesting. Order failed. I just sold there right now. It's coming back down. MACD looks like it's trying to come back from fall to now winter on the MACD. So that's a very good kind of sign that we could see a continuation as well as the RSI is trying to pull back down. Um, you know, against the trade trade line right over here. Now, but again, we're we're now twenty percent, so we are very very light here on Twitter. So let's not get too carried away. And then on S N D L, great little trade there by Neil. Obviously, we just talked about that, and now you're looking at it, and you're saying to yourself, what is the next move for S N D L? And I don't know, maybe we retest that fifty again. But sometimes when the air gets out of these stocks, man, and they've shown their face, it may not come back. Order failed. It's failed up there, great short. Or order fail. Looks like Eurocat is finally pushing back up. Let's go, baby. It's breaking out finally. You just had to be patient with Eurocad. I mean, your JPY, excuse me. Sorry, guys. I am focusing on too many things at once right now. Order failed. Oh, your cat is literally. Look at that, guys. Look at that push on your cat. We finally saw that breakout. Finally. <laughs> After such a long time. Dude, oh my. So it was choppy, but finally we saw that breakout. That's crazy. Very crazy. Order failed. Mm. That was insane. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it is what it is. I, that's that it happens. I, that I wasn't really focused on the Nasdaq. Man, that was such a good. Like I already saw a couple of trades that I could have taken on the Nasdaq short on that collapse in Dragon, because usually a really good signal present itself on that. So, um, it is what it is. Uh, and you guys can see that one 
uh, with Ashley coming back down and playing. We just caught uh, the milk there on Tilray, a uh, T-L-R-Y. Uh, yeah, right back down to 50, man. That, that kicked out at 68. This is kind of like those YOLO stocks again, kind of like mean, mean weed stocks today. Uh, Neil talked about that earlier, uh, I think before the show, that this is like the new game in town. So watch out here. Uh, just protect everything you have here, uh, you know, on the weed space. If you want to get out, uh, capture some profits because this is going to violate your downside. The crazy thing here is, look, I, I get it. These are all up so much. I mean, you can look at the, the man. On on what it's been doing. And when I yeah, that's a flush, man. I don't know. I should have just basically been focused a little bit more on the Nasdaq. That's my fault. You know, because these are flash crashes. These are like insane moves that that are not not normal at all. So they're they're really good opportunities. Looks like your JPY just got one R right now. I'm about to close half right now. Half of my position lock my stop up break even. I apologize for not being too focused on this trade. Two six. Um, I just you know, <laughs> whenever you see a flash crash on the Nasdaq guys, come on, like, those are those are times where I need to be focused on the market, cause, cause literally like, those moves never happen. Like those are like moves that, you know, are, are insane, right? So, yeah, we just closed, we just closed our profits. As you can see here, your JPY is rising back up. For any one of you guys, course members who took that trade, let me know. Yeah, so we locked our stop up break even, so you know, again, we can't lose on this trade. Right now, market looks choppy on the Nasdaq, so um, we'll see what we do here. So I'm just gonna wait out and see what it does. For which instrument, uh, Ryan Fisher? Are we talking about Nasdaq or are we talking about uh, um, Forex? Are we talking about your JPY?
at this 25 mark, but that's going to be our out, so we're waiting for Atria. I still think it has some upside surprises to it. I just don't know when that's going to happen, so uh, uh, just, just be patient. I'm waiting for time to use this one, and I'm going to do it right now. Punting, poo poo, punting, poo poo. Um, this stock, and again, we play, the stock is up on news and does parabolic moves. You wait for the halt, or maybe the 17 break. Um, I should have maybe held that short of the 17 the first time. 17 break, able to get 80 cents out the first look. Uh, second out here is going to give me about a buck 20. Hanging on to see if it can retest $14. Uh, that will give me about a $2.50 winner. Um, on pullback, it has held this price on dip sorry, a couple of times, at least once the pre market and once since the open. So that's the next look on BTC. Yeah, we're seeing some chop, which is pretty interesting. Um, because usually on a on a very on a big risk move like that, we're gonna see a continuation either up to the upside or toward, toward the downside. So it, it's very interesting seeing what um, the Nasdaq. I mean, yeah, the Nasdaq is doing right now. Okay, very violent. That's insane though, like it literally fell down from the high. You know, it's 200 points right there, so a very insane move. Order filled. Looks like we're breaking down again. Oh, we're breaking down. Let's go. I'm in right now. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, like, uh, looking at the markets right now, it looks just really, um, it just looks like it's something, something's about to happen. You know, that's why I'm, I'm mostly out of my positions right now. So any of my swing trades and holds that I have on my, my portfolio right now, I actually have none. Like, I, I, I sold off majority of my shares and, and, and specific companies, um, and literally, yeah, I mean, like, I, I sold most of my shares, so I'm, 
and I, I don't have any option plays that I'm, I'm doing right now. So, yeah, I mean, I don't have any option plays at the current moment. So, um, ooh, we're coming back down really fast right now. Look at that. Look at that. Let's go. But, yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm just, oh, my God. I'm just, but, yeah, I mean, it's something to be really careful with. Um, and, and that's why I, I sold most of my shares with everything. Look at that drop, bro. But it's just, it, oh my god. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. We just hit the 200 DMA. I'm out. I'm out. That was, oh my god. That was, that was, that was, that was a pretty good day. Pretty fucking good day. God, so I mean, you can see here out of the chop, I sold here, sold here, sold here. Close on the, on the drop. I bought here, closed on the profits. Sold here, closed here, sold here. Got here, I, I got out, I break even right over here. So you can see here, like, these are my trades for today. Like, study them. Um, basically took them on a different kind of system because this is on the 15 second. And if I took my scalping system on that one minute, I mean, on the 15 second, there's going to be too much market noise. So I use a different system whenever I'm trading on the 15 second and 30 second. Because um, it's momentum. It's, it's more aggressive, kind of a entry-wise, because I'm, I'm trading literally bounces, right? Trading bounces, so sold here off that bounce, came all the way down here, sold here off that second um, rejection right over here, closed here, closed here, closed here, sold and got a, got out at break even, bought here, bought here, closed here, sold here, sold here, closed, closed. Um, I got I got in and then I got out at break even right over here, and basically I was looking for that breakout, sold here, pulled back. So here on that on that um, rejection and that continuation. So this is a candle formation right over here. So let me get, let me show you real quick the candle formation. So this is this is clearly a bearish engulfing candle. So this is what I use for my system. So I I got in right over here. So it here came all the way down, bounce off that 200 DMA. Look at that! Look at that bounce off that 200 DMA. I could I could eventually just buy there if I really wanted to, but. Um, I was just out. I'm out. So it just literally bounced off that 200 DMA and now it's bouncing back up. Um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> really good day. I'm not going to lie. Today, I, I mean, I could have made so much more money. Like, I'm still grateful for the for today, but I would have made so much money if I was just a little bit more focused on, um, on the NASDAQ and, and, like, you know, looking for shorts. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose some. You know, I'm not going to catch all the profits in the world you know um but this is yeah my this is my p and for today i'm up about five thousand dollars so um yeah i mean like uh, just insane amount of of volatility today I, i'm definitely happy about it today though um i'm definitely grateful You're staying safe from Vanguard and Arth uh, RA. It's not, it's not ready for the market to do this. Yeah, I mean, if you're not ready, then you should just kind of um, just basically be aware of it and close some profits and, you know, basically try averaging down if, if the market does fail, come down. But right now, I'm, I'm actually still in cash right now. I'm mostly in cash right now out of my portfolios, even my fund. I'm actually all cash. So I'm only like, I'm not holding anything. I'm just basically looking for intraday swings or swing trades, small swing trades and, and et cetera. But yeah, I mean like looking at this, like uh, just insane, bro. <laughs> I mean like uh, that, those bounces were insane, was insane. <laughs> look at that, look at that, look at that crash. It's insane, and it, and it can continue going lower. So if we if we break toward the 200 DMA, I'm taking this all the way down to at least um I will say like there's still a level right there. So I'll say around this level right over here. I'll take it toward here. If we break off the 200 DMA, but just insane, insane volatility right there. Um, and then forex. <laughs> We're up one R, so um, 
yeah we, we have a lock, lock stop by break even right over here um so if it de if it decides to kind of just come down and stop us out it is what it is we're holding still um but yeah i mean we, we made some profits out of that so if it comes back down we may expect a level two off this level right over here so we may expect a level two off that 50 ema or the 200 e i mean right now it's still in the upshift right so we'll see if it shifts back down then we'll just we're just going to expect a level one reset and then once we see a level one reset we either use a wrist box for our entry or an engulfing candle and now it looks like yeah we just got stopped we just got stopped out so I made about like, uh, yeah, I made like 150 bucks on that trade. So, I mean, that's still pretty good. I'm still happy about that. Um, yeah, I'm so happy about that. So we could see maybe the level two coming off right over here or a level one reset for a continuation toward the upside for the second leg back up. So, um, but again, looking at your JPY today, it's, it's pretty choppy as you can see here. Um, it, it, it's, it's a lot choppy, choppier than than right now. So, um, if you guys are the course members, then look at the standard deviation. Look, look at what the standard deviation is telling you on the specific pair. So, if we look at the one hour, I mean the one daily, excuse me. So as much as you guys are seeing how far this is falling off, I know there's big moves happening. I mean, Tesla down at 800, and you're looking at Tilray and actually pull back. Uh, keep in mind where they've come from. Uh, keep in mind where the actual margin is at. And it's like, when we're getting excited about Oh, shit. I just erased like, all my drawings. Um, but looking at, at your JPY, like, look look at the standard deviation. So let's go ahead and, and take these indicators out for a second and um, look at the standard deviation right now. All right, so... Looking at the standard deviation, what are we seeing on the on the daily chart, right? Um, if we just take these drawings right over here, like what do you see here? Let me just put this red. Right, so you could clearly see that. Um, that looking at the daily chart, that you could see the volatility back in March where we broke toward the 800 EMA, and now you're seeing a very decrease in volatility from right over here. So. During these times, you see how low the volatility is right here. It's you know it's basically at the lows right now. So, um, you know this would be kind of a, a little move right over here, small move toward the upside, small little volatility move toward the upside, small volatility move to the upside, and from here, from here on, look how price action is rising and then standard deviation is falling. Right, so that's usually a bad indication of maybe a reversal. Um, but look how low it went guys look at that it literally went at 0 0.302 so literally like the lowest that it's been dude literally the lowest that it's been since literally like uh, 2014 so June of 2014 the standard deviation hasn't been low since June of 2014 so that's something you definitely have to keep in mind or how low this thing was so clearly I mean of course like since it's that low it's gonna have to rebound somehow but it doesn't mean that it's going to have to rebound really fast, right? It doesn't have to rebound with momentum or with volatility. It may slowly just come back with some deviation indicator, but, you know, it's not going to present itself with a lot of volatility because we're still, again, we're still pretty low. Like, look at this. We're still at the lows right now on your JPY. So, you know, what are you, you know, are you going to say, Jason, where, what kind of uh, market type are we in on, on your JPY? We're clearly in... Um, Order fill. We're clearly in, and of course, um, in, in a cold market because of how low the standard deviation is, right? So, I mean, if we look at the four hour, you can kind of see it much better. Look at that. Look how low the standard deviation is here, like is, is at right now. Look at look at how low it's been last couple of days. You can see the difference here, right? And then you can see the difference here. So yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty low right over here. You can see how, how right now on the four hour chart, the standard deviation indicator is falling right over here. So we're in a cold market. So whenever you're in a cold market, you're gonna expect choppiness and you're gonna expect kind of intra moves that are not gonna be quite nice, right? Not quite that volatility spike or, or uh, kind of continuation that you would like, right? So um, 
you know, that would be one of the reasons why we, you know, we didn't see really a good continuation. And we, we are rejecting off that highs on the four hour chart, like I said. So it's really hard whenever you have kind of sellers pressure, you have sellers pressure on top, right? It, it's, it's really hard. So I would be, again, careful. Like, keep that in mind. If you guys are in the course right now, look at the new, um, look at the new, new, uh, lecture that I, I just literally um i uploaded last night look at that and just see how i look for market changes right order build and uh, let's just keep on running this off to the high side right now we are huge and then uh you know it doesn't matter my daily goals uh but it, it, it's well over five times uh we won't keep talking about it because we get talked about that but you can see a clear bounce off that 50 though so um as i was talking right as I was talking, it presented itself a we're still in the upshift, so it just presented itself kind of a counter formation right over here. But I would say for this kind of formation, you still have to have confirmations toward the upside. Which you, you really didn't see at that at that candle close right there. You did see it right over here though. Through this candle, but that's kind of pushing it because that's a that's a big bar right here. So you're risking about. I mean, you're not risking as much as you were on the first entry, but that's kind of pushing it. But I mean, you could still take it for sure because it's still meeting all the requirements for the for for everything because it's a level two. So this will be a level two right over here. So I wouldn't avoid the trade out of nowhere, right? I'm not going to avoid the trade just because the standard deviation, unless like the standard deviation on all the time frames, right? On all the time frames are saying, okay, right now market is crap. It's in the cold market, then yeah, for sure. I'm not going to look for kind of like um, intraday buys unless it's a, like, unless on the 50 minute chart, unless like the last couple of three or four days, we were seeing really good momentum on that specific pair. So, so it's, it's, so it's about, about stocking that specific pair, right? You're stocking that pair whenever it's in a cold market. And then you're seeing that in the past three days, it's bounced off a significant level, like in the core says a universal level, and it's been hitting max ADR the last three days. Then you can kind of shift your focus on that pair a little bit more saying, okay, so it looks like, you know, even though we're in a cold market right now, standard deviation is rising and we're trying to break off that highs on the standard deviation indicator, right? So we could expect, we could in theory expect a, a reversal off that cold market into a hot market. So I just have to watch and look at what the market does in front of me, right? So if it's hitting ADR, you know, for a week, you know, it's bouncing off a level and standard deviation indicators on the daily chart and the four hour chart, is clearly rising, then that's a really good indication in my eyes where you can go ahead and start stalking it and, and looking for entries. Um, but for your JPY right now, I mean, I wouldn't avoid it. I would still watch it, but just keep that in mind. You know, I, I really don't like how it, it was rejecting off that highs. Um, so that's something that I, I really didn't like. And um, it's just, you know, you saw clear rejection, 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 right over here, rejection here. So, I mean, that's literally a significant level telling you that hey, you know, price action has been struggling to come off there. Now, if we came all the way down to a 200 EMA, I would buy here, I would buy here, I would buy here, and I would buy at any lower levels. But since we're already max ADR, I mean, not max ADR, but since we're already at the high out of, the, out of those levels on top, it doesn't really make sense because there is a chance that your price price action is going to be choppier, which is, that's exactly what it did because, again, we're at that high. There's clear sellers pressure on top of here. Clear sellers pressure. You can clearly see how the sellers have been in control off that level. So I mean, with my scalping system, we're not trying to predict the the, the breakout off that top of a significant level. We're just trying to make money, right? We're just trying to get in and out of the market. So yeah, I mean, I, I was able to get one R out of it for sure, which is pretty good. 
I mean, like, with my scalping system, the, the risk management part, it helps me kind of just um, basically, like, get in and out and not get in a with, a, with a loss, basically. Because, it, you know, again, I lock myself at 50%. I, I lock myself at break even at 1R, and then I, you know, I close half. Order filled. But again, very choppy kind of a move on your JPY today. Um, I'll put this on the watch list. I mean, I'll put this on the markups for you guys. Um, looking at Eurocad though, like you can clearly see how Eurocad was having has been making really strong moves lately. And yesterday, you really saw that that strong move. So from right over here, you saw really good strong moves from from this level, right over here, from this level, right over here, and we pushed all the way from max ADR. Today though, you're you're seeing. This is something for you guys to watch out for the course members. You're seeing kind of an incline of EMAs right over here, right? I mean, not an incline, but a, a kind of a squeeze of EMAs coming in together. So what do we know about EMAs? They like to break out. They like to come and break out and trend, basically. So um, that's something to keep an eye on for tomorrow because eventually we're going to see a breakout on either in both directions, right? And we can take advantage of that, of that momentum. Um, but your cat, we saw a really strong move on on like yesterday. There's a lot of entries that I'm marking up for you guys. I'm definitely gonna go ahead and post that up for you guys as well, and in the chat. But if I mean, if we look at the one hour right now. We look at the standard deviation indicator, so if we scroll up to daily chart. Britain is down 0.66%, and Germany is down 1.11%. Delivery here trading in Germany. You can see, like, standard deviation is falling right now on the daily chart right now. It's coming back up, so it's it's falling. It's it's fairly falling, so we're, we're right now at the lows right now. If we go to the four-hour chart. You know, it's falling like that. So, I mean, right now, it's not a really good sign right now on your CAD based on the daily chart in four hour. We're, we're currently in a cold market right now. Right? So, um, it's, it's something to be aware whenever you're in a cold market and hot market. Right? Um, looking at the 15 minute chart, though, we did hit, we did hit max ADR yesterday. And for the yeah, so for the last couple of days, you can see how it how it's been struggling to hit hit ADR. Um, here it hit ADR really fairly really well. Here it hit it hit ADR ADR ADR. Um, but you know you're not seeing a lot of volatility on your CAD. But that doesn't mean you can you can, you won't still take entries like from right over here from yesterday's move. Um, you know, fairly yesterday, we, we had a really good kind of um, really good bounces off levels right over here. So bounce off the 850, bounce off at 50 and 200. So a lot of bounces where you had a lot of opportunities to take place. So yeah, I'm gonna mark that up Order for you guys in the in the group chat. But yeah, um, you can see here clearly on Nasdaq 100, we saw a clean bounce. Um, just a clean bounce right over here. So I, I've just been buying the dip really quickly on NASDAQ right now. Just quick buys. Just a few points. Reducing my risk because I really don't want to lose profits. Um, but yeah, I'm basically done for the day. I'm, I'm chilling right now. Um, maybe, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll continue trading bounces. But I mean, I mean today is an extremely good day for me. Um, like I'm five thousand dollars is pretty good, you know. And it, it would have been much more. Like I'm not gonna lie. Like it would have been much more <laughs> if I just kind of stayed focused a little bit on the NASDAQ. I cannot shift my focus in forex on your JPY. But hey, it is what it is. What it is, you know. You're not gonna catch every move in the world. Um, and I'm I'm still happy. I'm ex I'm still extremely happy that you know I was able to catch fairly good moves today. I mean, like, I, I caught a little bit of that NASDAQ move, and I, I'm extremely, extremely happy about that. So, 
it is what it is, you know? You just got to be <laughs> grateful for everything. For, grateful for being green. Grateful for making profits. So, um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for today's stream, to be honest. Um, we did get a win on your JPY, so that's pretty good. You know, your JPY is, is choppy right now, but I, I am expecting it on trying to move higher. And from this um, kind of formation right up here, From this kind of formation right over here, if you took that, you know, you're still not, you still wouldn't have gotten stopped out. This kind of formation only makes sense because, again, it was through the MACD and, T and um, RSI, so it only had confirmations on both ends on that specific time, uh, specific close. So we'll see what this level two does if it continues going higher and, and breaking toward this previous highs right over here. Um, but I'm not taking it because, <clears throat> I'm not taking it because it's, you know, it's a little bit choppy, so. And it's right now, it looks like on your JPY, it's, it's still in a cold market. So, and we, we're off that highs right here. So this is the zone right over here. This is the zone that I have marked up where that's basically at the high right now. That seller's pressure right there. So I'm just going to be a little bit careful for that and just basically not trade that because we're so close toward those toward that significant zone and toward these kind of um, levels where price action reversed fairly quickly right over here. Right, so, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for today's stream. No, you're fine, Peter. It's not your fault. It's my fault. Um, you know, I, I, sh I have, like, four screens right at once, so I should have been focused on, like, I have USA JPY in one screen right over here. I have my main screen. I have the NASDAQ right over here. And then I have my um, streaming setup right over here. So it is my fault. Like, I, I was seeing the NASDAQ right over here, but... Um, I wasn't seeing on the one minute. So the one minute, there are the entries. And I saw that it falls. Like, oh, it's falling right now. So I was like, oh, I'll see what it does. But I didn't know that it, it, it was hitting my, my entry signals. <laughs> so it is my fault. But anyways, um, yeah, hopefully you guys are having an awesome day. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, choppy day on your JPY, right? Um, but it is what it is. You, you got to know your market. Like with this live stream, you got to know when you're in a hot market and cold market. And obviously, whenever you're you're in a cold market and ranging bound market, you're gonna experience choppiness whenever you're day trading. Whenever you're swing trading, that's a little bit different, right? That's a little bit different, I would say. But whenever you're day trading, and you're trading on those market conditions on a daily basis, or look, or like just looking at them, that's something you definitely have to be careful with because you're gonna expect choppier moves. So whenever you do get in a trade, you're gonna be in choppy moves and. You know, it's just if it doesn't make sense for that trade frame, for that trade, then then, then like don't take it, right? Um, but you know, it's still a winner in your JPY, so I'm so I'm so happy about that. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys are having an awesome day. Like I said again, let me know if you guys have any questions, and I'll see you guys on uh, what is it Thursday? Yeah, I'll see you guys on Thursday, right? Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm gonna go over real quick um, the. The new, the new lecture right over here that I that I got for you, that I made yesterday. So um, right over here, you have you have our case studies right over here. More case studies and live trading, live trades coming soon as well. Um, you know, back tested and forward tested stats results. So you can see here, you know, all my stats within within the actual, you know, within the actual um, system. So. You know, you can see here, you know, I talk about kind of the, the all the charts right over here. So the charts, the, the stats, so the trades, the stats, you can see the risk per trade, the max drawdown about 5.10%, the profit factor of that. So you can see here that, um, you know, I, I pointed out a lot, the system quality number, on um, the, the, the total wins, the the losses, and et cetera. So again, so it's... You know, and this is my forward testing results. So this is basically all my forward testing that I've done in the system. So actually live money, um, you know, not like, uh, you know, back testing, etc. Um, and then I, I pointed out some charts here. Um, and then as well as the this ch uh, chart sequence charts as well, the trade sequence charts as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, I I put a lot of work into this course. Um, it's it's back tested, it's forward tested. And then you could also see the forward tested and back tested results here. So you can click on this and you can download it. And then you could check it out as well for yourself on Excel if you guys have Excel, and you know you guys you guys can literally check it out as well. So um, you know it's again it's <laughs> I put a lot of work into this system. You know it clearly it has profitable results. It's a profitable system. 
you know, out of 100 and 205 trades, you made about 53.5% live trading, live trades, forward testing right up here. Um, trade sequence plot, rolling average percentage, cumulative percentage. So you can see out of 200 trades, what it was, what was the cumulative percentages? And it, you know, you can see a fairly good um, curve, fairly good percentage curve right over here. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, the results are there. Uh, but anyway, so this is the, the kind of video that I, I, I posted yesterday for the course members. Um, so I, basically in this video, I go over um, standard deviation and how to kind of know what kind of market you're in and, and see when, if you're in a co-market or hot market, right? So um, and then I also po posted some flashcards for you guys. So if you guys wanted to load the flashcards, go ahead and do that and just kind of study up, study up on the indicators, study up on the flashcards right over here. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for, for today. Let me know if you guys have any questions, right? Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. And I'll see you guys on Thursday for the next live stream. All right, so have a good day.